This is Jordan's room. It's pretty much, um, I haven't done anything with it. Jen's son Jordan was a popular, athletic, and happy 17-year-old schoolboy. Probably sports, obviously, it's one. And then all the people that I've met and got close with throughout the years. It still smells like him. Does it? Mm. And that's something when I open the door, that's one of the reasons why the door is closed. I can still smell that sweat, dirt, cologne mix. Mm in this room and I'm just not ready to part with his stuff. Jordan was targeted by a sextortion gang. They messaged him on Instagram, pretending to be a girl his age, and coaxed him into sending explicit images. They then blackmailed him, demanding money in exchange for not sharing the pictures. Jordan sent some, but it wasn't enough. It was less than six hours from the time that Jordan started communicating till the time he ultimately took his life. There's actually like a script online and these people are just going through the script and putting that pressure on and they're doing it quick because then they can move on to the next person because it's about volume. Since Jordan died, Jen has become an active campaigner, raising awareness about sextortion to young people and parents. On TikTok, her videos have now had more than a million likes. But if you haven't talked to your children about sextortion and what happens, go get them right now, immediately, sit them down, talk to them. I get messages all the time from parents reaching out, asking what to do um, because it happened to their child or just reaching out to tell me this did happen to my child and thank you because they remembered Jordan's story and they came to me for help. Has anyone got in touch with you who have had a child that's taken their life? There have been parents who have come to me that their child took their life over this. US crime figures show sextortion cases more than doubled last year, rising to 26,700. In the US alone, at least 27 boys killed themselves in the last two years. What happened to Jordan in Marquette, here in the north of the US, has become a focal point in the ongoing discussions about how to solve sextortion. It's a growing global problem with victims all over the world. But there's one country where a disproportionate number of these cyber criminals seems to be based. According to researchers, a large number of scammers come from West Africa, specifically Nigeria. These brothers admitted to targeting Jordan and many other boys. Samuel Ogoshi, who's 22, and Samson Ogoshi, who's 20, were arrested in Lagos and extradited to the US. They are awaiting sentencing. Another man has also been arrested and is fighting extradition. Message records show the criminals were callous. When Jordan told them he might kill himself if they released the pictures, they replied, do that fast or I'll make you do it. Two other Nigerian men were arrested in April, linked to the suicide of an Australian schoolboy. Nigerian authorities have long been accused of not doing enough, but in the last year, they've been rounding up young men and arresting them for what's described as internet fraud. Locally, they're known as Yahoo Boys, after a previous wave of fraud linked to the Yahoo email service in the early 2000s. The head of Nigeria's cybercrime center, which last year published this promotional video, strongly defends police action to stop the criminals. People that believe that Nigeria is not doing enough is laughable. I use the word laughable because the government of Nigeria spent billions of naira to provide to establish a national cyber crime center like this. The work is actually ongoing. We are not take, taking it, you know, things for granted with regards to anything concerning sextortion in particular. And they know this, and we are giving them very serious hit. A lot have been prosecuted, a lot have been arrested. The police admit that cases are on the rise, but they also say Nigerian teens are being targeted too. Cyber experts in the country say sextortion and other cyber fraud has become normalised though to the large, young, tech-savvy population. The main triggers is actually socioeconomic in nature, so um, it's not just about availability of tools. There's also the big problem of unemployment. There's also the big problem of poverty. You know, it's become almost like a mainstream activities where they don't really think too much about the consequences or just go in all the same because you know, a colleague is going in and you know, making money and all of that. 
Gordon John Denae with high achievement. Meanwhile in Michigan, Jen continues her campaign in memory of her son, who couldn't be there to collect his high school honours.